<clears throat> Welcome everybody. Welcome to Classic Cast number 20. I'm here with Tips Out Baby. I'm here with Stay Safe TV. And uh, today we, we got a little bit to talk about, about uh, Blizzard's proposed patch progression for Classic. Uh, this is something that's come up, um, I think, for all of our streams, uh, you know, quite a bit. We've, we've all talked about it and uh, our thoughts about it, our concerns about it. But we really wanted to have a Classic cast where uh, we go in and, and kind of delve into it a little bit and uh, explain why we feel the way that we do. Um, one thing, uh, actually, let's go ahead and start. Uh, there was a blue post recently regarding classic stay safe. Do you want to go ahead and uh, do you want to go ahead and get into that? Yeah, we're going to read through it. Gear forgive me, everyone. I'm still sort of learning how to read. So it's maybe like two or three paragraphs here. So it's a guy on the Battle.net forums in the classic WoW section that says this. <clears throat> and then Yithasin's, um uh, responds to it in a moment. He says, uh, this is the, the random poster, mounts and companions you get in classic should not be usable across multiple characters on the same classic account. However, you should be able to have these rewards in retail. <clears throat> this will increase the longevity of Classic WoW. While I can fully understand the argument for people will just play Classic WoW for the achievements, mounts, companions, instead of Classic itself and the people who want to play, that is not in and of itself a bad thing. Some people only still play retail for mounts, companions, appearances, such as myself. While I would be playing Classic WoW for the gameplay, getting things I can use on live as well would be an added bonus and would encourage me to use the Classic servers more. I can understand concerns for a slippery slope, which is why I think they should only solely and be nothing other than one way. Classic appearances, mounts, companions only go to retail, not vice versa. He then goes on to say, unique rewards might be something to consider, such as special pets, sets, or mounts for completing raids and dedicating time in Classic WoW. Someone who only wants the rewards and wants the single player experience won't be able to get those rewards and will be forced to immerse themselves in the community if they do. Similarly to how if you wanted to raid, you had to immerse yourself in the community. Except now you have raiding and something you want in retail. This will help to solve the problem that's in the community right now of silence and single player experiences with other people around by reminding them what it's like to be part of a realm wide community. <laughs> in World of Warcraft. So, S1, I, I want to just go ahead and read Githison's response to that. Yeah, and, and just yeah, just to clarify, that that was the original post. This was a, uh, a forum goer that posted this, and then Githison's right. responded with, uh, you know, like it was stated at BlizzCon, there will be no crossover in rewards between Retail WoW and Classic WoW. They said that at BlizzCon. He reiterated that. Uh, I don't think there's any need to change that stance, but we appreciate your post. Okay, you know, uh, okay of course, right. Uh, like, whatever, dude. <laughs> no, but they say, like, there's no need to change it. Uh, I think it's fair to ask for an opportunity, uh, turn those rewards again. Uh, I don't think it should come at the cost of diminishing the rewards that players earned years ago and cherish. I think the opportunity to earn and have them exclusively on Classic is fair because it's staying on Classic itself. Uh, I think any more crossover than that should could be damaging and lessen the value or prestige of those rewards uh it's pretty solid philosophy at the moment that there will be zero crossover of rewards so good news uh i, I think in that regard for that, that they have that stance no uh and there was another guy who responded with something else um stay safe do you have that open yeah let me scroll down and look at it here so uh in response to the into the a response to the discussion that we just read, uh, another third third poster comes in and says, literally one of the two reasons I'd ever consider doing classic just shot down instantly. You know that thing that's used to keep people playing? Farming, transmogs, and mounts and pets, he's, he's referring to. <laughs> yeah. You guys are just throwing it away. Seems very silly. And then Yithasin's response with something else. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry you feel this way, but if that's what you were hoping for, then it sounds like classic isn't really for you. Uh, that's okay though, I still encourage you to try it. It's not throwing it away, it's giving the community that wants Classic the most authentic experience that we can provide. Adding any sort of reward, carryover in either direction, isn't authentic and defeats the point. Classic is there for those that want to play it, not just for rewards on their BFA license, which would be devaluing to those that earn those rewards that are no longer obtainable, and vice versa would be introducing things that were never there in Classic to begin with. Neither of which we want to do in this case. We know the community that's been asking for Classic for years, uh, doesn't want either of those scenarios, and neither do we. So, I, th I just think it's real funny, real quick. So, so the guy says, you know the thing that's used to keep people playing? The, the, the player says this to, to Yithesins. And I just think that's so funny, because it's like, 
like I mean I don't know I I just think it's hilarious that they're saying like okay look like I, I want to play dress up in retail wow and it's like okay well what about back in the day where the game was about the game right yeah it was about yeah. the it was about the experience of the game your rating you're you're playing with people you're doing this and like sure you I I just mentioned some things that still in the still exist in the game sure but it's uh for my personal opinion uh it's it's clearly not as rewarding so I don't tips, know tips, I, what I do think you think I was the poster that said, uh, I want the link. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I completely agree. Uh, it's a one-way street. Classic is classic. Um, there's no reason to link the two games. It opens up a world of pain. It opens up a world of possibilities that mm. I don't think anyone wants. The WoW token could potentially be linked. I mean, there's so many things that could happen that it's best to avoid uh, that can of borders altogether. Right. It's outside of the sub, really, right? So. Yeah, and this guy in the original post, uh, the one I read at first, he's sort of suggesting that in order for people to want to participate in classic WoW group activities, they'll need to be incentivized with mounts, pets, companions, sets, transmog that carry over to retail WoW. And I think, I, I think if someone has that opinion, that's very clear to me that that person hasn't played vanilla WoW because that that's mm -hmm. just what the game is. Like vanilla WoW is so good, that's what the game is about. You don't need to coerce people or offer them crossover game rewards um in order to get people to do upper black rock spire like it's just fun right it's just, that's just the game right no and i, and I, I don't know like big. yeah like vanilla wow it, it has its own two legs to stand on you don't have to bribe people to play it mm -hmm. uh, and i think uh i think it's important i think it's i think it's good that they came out and mentioned that that uh because that's an opinion we've had is like classic isn't necessarily for everybody like obviously uh with any game you want as many people playing it as possible sure and, and you want to you, you don't want to shut people out of it but at the same time like you can't you can't sacrifice like what the game is for for that right just to get like you know a certain group of people to play classic and retail wow or or i should say modern wow or live wow or whatever you want to call it now uh they're they're two different markets right yeah, and and I, I think I think there's people that fit into both of those markets, and that's fine. Uh, but it, it isn't for everybody, and, and I think it's cool that they acknowledge that and they understand that. Yeah, I mean, there there's no reason why there has to be 100% crossover. Obviously, if if there's a lot of crossover, I guess that's good. But the, to expect that 100% of retail players to enjoy classic, 100% of classical players to enjoy retail, <laughs> it's probably an unrealistic expectation. I mean, it, it is two divergent and two different markets, and that's total. That's perfectly fine, I think. Mm -hmm. For sure, agreed. And um, it's it's very it's very nice to me. I mean, I think this is good news. Get this in here. I like him a lot. Um, it seems to me I get the impression from his responses that Blizzard is probably aware of that. Um, that they're not going to compromise classic WoW in order to cater to people that really don't have any interest in in enjoying classic WoW just for just for what classic WoW is, right? Which is good. I mean, it, the the sort of the the backbone of classic WoW, the fundamentals of the gameplay experience, shouldn't be compromised to try to get more retail players into classic well. Mm -hmm. 100%. Um, so from there, uh, that's good news. That's good news. But from there, we kind of want to uh, go on to the main point of this podcast, the main point of this episode, I should say. Uh, and that's to kind of, like I said, dive in a little bit more deeply into uh, the design philosophy and what they want to do with uh, in terms of patch progression for classic. So... Uh, they came out and they said at BlizzCon that they were currently thinking, so it's not set in stone, but they were currently thinking about doing four separate stages of content release with Classic. The first stage was MC Anixia, Dire Maul, Kazakh and Azergos. The second stage right. was going to be Blackwing Lair, uh, PvP rewards, and Battlegrounds. So I'm assuming the honor system. I, I think it's safe to assume that it's going to be the honor system in stage two, but at least the rewards in stage two and ZG with BWL as well. Uh, the third stage, AQ patch, uh, tier 0 0.5, the Silithus stuff with Scenarian Circle and whatnot, the Silithus content, and then also the Emerald Dragons. And then mm -hmm. the fourth stage was going to be uh, Nax, Scourge Invasion. Um, so basically, yeah. well, I was just going to say one more thing. They, they basically took the four major raids with MC, BWL, AQ, and Nax, and then they split it up into uh, into packages of content uh, around that. So, Sisif, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, I mean, I think we can all agree. I think the general consensus of the Classic WoW community right now is that it's it's not enough content patches, right? It's, it's just, it's too clumped. You know, it's, I mean, we're gonna talk about this as we go on with the podcast, but 
Dire Maul should probably come out after Molten Core and uh, Anixia. Like, uh, Zul'Grub should probably come out after Blackwing Lair. It's just too clumped up right now. It's too much all at once, or too much... Um, yeah, too much all at once, and it's just not it's just not and not a not a good idea. And we're going to sort of break that down as we go on with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, to kind of let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead and go right into stage one and, and, and what it is. Uh, MC and Anixia, they well, it doesn't even mention Maradon, right? So it's probably not even uh, you know on the radar. Like they have that set in stone. Like they're going to have Maradon on launch, which uh, I don't think it's a big. Uh, I don't think that's an issue. Uh, I mean, that's something that they had done. You know, the concept of patch progression isn't something foreign, or sorry, uh, phased content release. Uh, kind of packaging certain patches together isn't something completely foreign. Uh, they've done this on, on the most recent private servers, like the, the NOS Core private servers, that's what they've done. Uh, basically releasing on 1.2. So, I think Moradon yeah. on launch is totally fine. And, and <clears throat> about Moradon, this is one thing they, they actually told us when we were meeting with them at BlizzCon, some of the classic devs, they said that, you know, Vanilla WoW came out at different points in time uh, around the world. And so for Europe, in Europe, which came out a month after North America, Moradon was out, right? So I think there's actually a decent argument to just have Moradon be there. It's as far as like in-game implications of having Moradon there a month early or a month late, you know, it's really not the end of the world. I'm, I, if, like, I would be happy if they delayed a month. I'm fine with that, but I just don't think it's, I, I don't think it's the biggest issue to complain about right now. I think like Dire Maul and Zulgarub and mm-hmm. World Dragons and stuff like that, that's where we should focus our attention, not Mordon, which is a lot more trivial, I think. Mm-hmm. I agree. Absolutely. It was patched in three weeks after the game launched. In all likelihood, very few people had hit 60 within three weeks. So it, it's negligible. I agree. The focus should be on Dire Maul and, and the World of Bosses and, and the other stages as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, Molten Core, Anixia, they were in on launch, but Dire Maul and Kazakh and Azergos weren't put in until patch 1.3, uh, which right. I believe was nearly four months, just about four months after uh, after launch. And uh, it was, I believe, just about one month after uh, after the EU launch. So, you know, different different points of time, like we said. Uh, the game came out in different points of time for, for different regions. But um, having something like Dire Maul in on launch is... To, to me, that's a big concern, and, and we all kind of share that sentiment, but um, reason being is because whenever you put Dire Maul into the game, it introduces a uh, kind of like a new, uh, a new catalog of gear for you to receive uh, for your character. If you're like a caster, there's a lot of like plus damage items, there's some plus healing items. Uh, and the thing with this gear is it's not just pre-raid bis gear, it's gear that's better than a lot of gear in Molten yeah. Core. It just trivializes the raid gear, a lot of it. Yeah, there, there are some pieces like that. Um, and then on top of that, like you have the world buffs that come in, which uh, are, are there to really help you. I mean, it's it's kind of like speed run private server meta. Like, okay, like go get all your world buffs, your consumes, boom, 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 and then try and do MC as fast as you can. But also it, it helps a lot for your raid to actually like just do the raid. Right, and uh, you know, if you die, you die, and you lose your buffs. But <clears throat> that's just one more thing that's added into the game that is uh, it kind of makes the content easier. Uh, you already have this with like you know, you're already going going with 1.12 talents. You're already saying 16 debuff slots. Uh, this is just one more thing on launch that kind of uh, adds to it. So, and, and this, I, I think, you know, more than the other stuff, I think this is something that is a bigger deal to me. The, the, I think phase content, the, the way they've done the phase content release is a much bigger deal to me than uh, a, a lot of the other stuff. So I think if you can spread this out, if you can spread out the Dire Maul and Kazakh and all that stuff coming out a little bit later than launch, uh, not only is it better for the health of the game, but it's also better for Blizzard because this is a problem that Retail WoW has and, and they've had for years is like they, they'll have like three or four patches in an expansion and you know it'll be like a major content release whatever uh but there's this there's such a heavy like lull it's a huge content drought and, and retail's experiencing this right now and uh you know sure we know what's coming but you know in, in retail it's like okay like if, if the patch isn't good then that's like a nightmare for them you know they need they need something they they need to have like a constant release of content so that people stay hyped for it people stay subbed like that, to me, it does this like this doesn't really make any sense uh, on any level. Like not for the players, not for Blizzard, uh, hardcore players or casual players. And um, I'll, I'll kind of go into on on casual players are not going to like this because 
and they might not know that they don't like this because they, they don't understand the extent of it. Uh, because the high-end players are going to be able to come in. These are the guys who just know everything about vanilla. They're going to rush to 60. They're going to go straight into Dire Mall. They're going to start farming. Uh, they're going to start doing DM North, uh, DM East jump runs. There's going to be a lot of stuff that they can do, while somebody who might be new to the game or, or can play more casually is basically going to get left in the dust. And sure, like that might happen. That, that might happen anyway, right, that they get left in the dust. But to the extent that it's going to happen where... You have the high end going in, and they're basically going to take over the economy. They're going to have all the best gear uh, in, in PvP for, in terms of like faction balance and stuff goes. Like these guys are going to be uh, able to have more presence in the world. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's something that, um, sure, like you know, you might hear that, and as a high end player, you're like, oh yeah, that's great, right? But the problem is, is you're just going to get bored, and it goes back to the original point of like you're you're not having another uh, another patch put in for however many months, right? I, I don't think that's something that's good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, the thing I take away most from this is how it disrupts the ebb and flow of progression. If you're releasing Dire Maul, Kazakh, Azure Ghost, but, but more specifically Dire Maul with MC and Onyxia, all of a sudden MC does not feel as valuable or as impactful of a raid as it would be if it was by itself. All of a sudden those purples and MC don't seem as uh, enticing as they would had Dire Maul not been out because all of a sudden you have better pieces of gear in many cases that are lootable from this five-man dungeon, why on earth would you go in Molten Core? Obviously, you'll go in just for the experience, but the incentive to go into Molten Core diminishes dramatically. And that's the case also with BWL and ZG, and, and it continues onward in these stages. Basically, the most important thing is to create a smooth sense of progression in Classic WoW. And the way these, these stages are packaged, that sense of progression is compromised because some portions of the stage content is objectively better or more rewarding than other portions of the content. And in many cases, it ends up trivializing the raids in lieu of the five mans. Yeah, I think a big part of, you know, progression and player player character progression is sort of like a psychological thing. You, you mm -hmm. need to feel like there needs to be a proper time investment or effort investment to reward ratio. You need to feel like you're actually getting things out of the effort you put into the game. And like Tip said, you you will feel less rewarded in you know farming molten core for the first six weeks or seven weeks if you can just go into Dire Maul and you know ninety percent of molten core gear is trivial for you. Mm -hmm, if you can absolutely. just go in and get it out of a five man dungeon. Um, so yeah, I, I and S one was hitting on this. I think as a as the classical community, the more hype events, you know, let's say instead of four content release phases, let's say there was six or seven. You know, it's just more. You know, yo guys, in like five weeks, we're gonna have this to do. We're gonna have this. To do. We're gonna have that to do. You'll have YouTube videos about it. You'll have forum posts about it. You'll have mm -hmm. people on stream talking about it. You'll have people in trade chat talking about it. I think oh, underestimating the importance of that just community hype. I I can't wait for this to happen, man. Mm -hmm. Like, that's I think that's a mistake to underestimate the value of that. Right, and and we've seen it on private servers too. I mean, like you know, in the past, whenever. There's a new patch coming or anything that happens. Oh, people are preparing for the patch. They know they they sure they know what's coming. They understand that AQ's coming out. Let's start farming nature resist gear. Let's start doing this. Um, that's fine to know what's coming, but the hype and the preparation and everybody's saying like, oh, like let's do this, let's do that, and people are talking yeah. about it and people are going, they're searching like, you know, what what should I get for my best in slot for this patch? You know, what's coming out in AQ that I really need to have as as a fury warrior or rogue or mage or whatever. Uh, all that stuff's good, right? The more people are talking about your game in, in a positive light, uh, the better, right? And, and that's kind of, that, that's one thing I want to emphasize. Like, four phases, only four phases, just doesn't make sense from any standpoint. I, I think, I mean, there, there's 11 patches in vanilla. You know, it starts with 1.1, it goes to 1.12. Um, like, I mean, I think uh, I think Light's Hope is doing nine. They, they, they did nine phases of content release so like like i said phased content release packaging the different content together it is not crazy you know i i think you know nine nine is good but i don't think that they're going to be able to move it to nine or they're not going to want to move it to nine but like six seven eight patches would be so much better you know at bare minimum six because i think they need to split up uh the honor system they need to split up zg from bwl uh we'll, we'll get into that a little bit or um Actually, let's go ahead and talk about that now, All right? Do you, do you guys have anything else with the first stage that you wanna that you wanna talk about or touch on before we move on to? I guess let's talk about PvP in stage two. I mean, just just one more thing with Dire Maul. Like, I don't I don't want to 
I don't want to trivialize the negative impact of, you know, of of the other stages and how clustered they are, but I think like I think you probably agree, guys. Having Darmot early is probably the biggest mistake on this on this timeline we see right now. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Having early Diarmal. I mean, yeah. the, just the gear you get. I mean, you have the trinkets. First off, the Royal Seals of Eldritch Loss. Depending on, on your class, those are very good or sort of shitty, but uh, most of them are very good. Um, caster, I mean, you, you guys can talk about melee DPS. For casters, you have so much spell power and you have so much crit rating. Mm -hmm. um, it is casters see a huge increase in dps healers um hide of the wild a bunch of healing spell mm -hmm. power gear what about for melee dps tarnished elven rings very strong best mm -hmm. in slot for a number of classes redoubt cloak as well it's the only cloak defense on it pre-raid pretty much mm -hmm. um there's, there's the a lot chest of things. piece the male chest, chest piece is uh i think with two crit on it something like that it's it's really really good <clears throat> yeah and the tribute buffs uh 200 attack power three percent spell crit 50 percent stamina like this isn't like what we're trying to say is it's not just like a one percent or a two percent damage boost with our mall being no. a bunch. this is potentially like a 15 to 20 percent raid wide damage and healing buff and and if you guys want an example that happened in wow picture the icc buff the uh the strength of Rin buff and icc back in the day picture that being in molten core at launch we already talked about how easy molten core is everybody raves oh my god molten core is the easiest raid ever no one's gonna have a problem with it imagine throwing on another 15 to 20 percent nerf because of this gear and because of these buffs that's what we're talking about greatly diminishes the value and the difficulty of the content and ultimately it makes it less memorable which obviously is not what we're about and you know that's all true. You're you're absolutely right. And this isn't even mentioning the economic implications of Diamond North Gold farming or Diamond East farming or farming the books of uh, what are they called? Furrer's Compendium of Dragon's Land. There's there's so much just it, it, their economic implications are huge with having Diamond out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and one thing to kind of emphasize, I guess, or not emphasize, but to consider is that and and Jake Rudersby mentioned this in the chat. Sure, in retail vanilla WoW, a lot of people weren't even level 60 by the time Dire Mall came out. But, I mean, things are different now. Like, people know everything in terms of, like, not, people know everything is kind of like a, it's like a buzz statement. But there's so many more people that have access to more knowledge. There's resources out there. There's guides on leveling and stuff that um, weren't as readily available back in 2004. So, in, in early 2005. <clears throat> the problem is, is that whenever you have all these people that, you know, would have been like the guy on their server back in the day, they're all like, they're all flooded into the population now and, and compared to before. And they're just going to go in and they're going to be able to take advantage of all these things that uh, weren't an issue back then. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the the few people that just know everything from playing on private servers or from having played way back in the day, they're going to dominate. The more content there is, the easier it is. It, the easier it is for them to sort of manipulate it and be successful. And then the people that are new. I mean, I, I think most people playing classic are going to be fresh, fresh players. I don't think. I think there's going to be a lot of noobs, and it's going to be great. Yeah. But um, yeah. if there's like stuff like Diamond out, they're just they're going to get dusted. There's mm -hmm. no other way to put it. Yeah, bad, bad for everybody. I mean, and then everybody else is going to get bored, and they're going to end up raid logging. Yeah. Like it's yep. just. Yeah, as a guild leader, like, that's one thing I don't like is as I don't like having, and I understand, like, you know, people have different situations, but for the kind of guild I want to run, I, I don't necessarily want to have a bunch of people in their raid logging because, you know, you're going to need to get a hold of people or people are going to need to farm this or do that and do stuff together as a guild. Um, I just think it's bad. So. Um, I just think it's bad. I agree. <laughs> yeah, just I bad. Agree for it. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. Squad W. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's let's do um, let's let's go on to phase two actually. So um, in phase two, that's whenever they said they put in the PvP rewards. Uh, ZG is coming out with BWL. So in a similar vein of Dire Mall coming out with MC, and I would say even a bigger deal because the rewards in ZG are, are even bigger than Dire Mall. Um, as far as gear rewards, um, let's start with PvP. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. With <laughs> PvP, the the honor system was implemented in patch 1.4, and Blackwing Lair was put out in patch 1.6. They're saying that they want to put all the battlegrounds in, everything in at once. I think that's fine. I think I think that's okay. Um, but if they put in the PvP system with the launch of BWL, then 
I think it's going to, it does a number of things. One of the things, namely, and, and at the end of the day, I think this is the most important thing. It makes PvP not as fun because it's, if it takes longer to be put into the game, it won't be as desirable to do. If it's not as desirable to do and get the honor rewards, then it, it, it effectively makes it less fun because there's less people in the in the player pool, less people queuing for battlegrounds, whatever. I think not having it on launch is actually something that's really good because you're not able to go in there and just pick up the honor gear right off the bat. Um, private server meta and retail vanilla meta are two different things. On private servers, the honor system is put in in the beginning. Uh, people go in and they start getting their, their honor gear and they mm -hmm. use that gear to actually progress through the raid content. In vanilla... PvP gear was seen more as like an alternative to raiding gear as opposed to uh, as opposed to a supplement to raiding gear, and uh, I think I think that's something that's that's pretty big personally. Yeah, first off, I definitely agree with the decision not to have the honor system or battlegrounds in the game at launch. I think ha having it be delayed is very important. It's very important for a lot of reasons. We've talked about that before, and it's weird because you know, in, in like you mentioned, um, in actual vanilla. The honor system in Battlegrounds um, came out two patches before Blackwing Lair. So it, in certain cases in Vanilla WoW, people were going into Blackwing Lair with rank 12, 13, mm -hmm. 14 gear. Um, so in a weird way, if they release on stage two PvP systems in Battlegrounds at the same time as Blackwing Lair, it will actually be like BWL will actually be a little bit harder than uh, it was in Vanilla WoW. Because, yeah. people, because people won't have rank 14 weapons or 12 or 13 gear right mm -hmm. off the bat i think i think that mostly affects like the high end like the hardcore player right. base but you're right because right, right. they, they won't be able to go in there and and like stack a bunch of rank 14 warriors right. and cycle because one thing that happens is like um like rating rating on a two-week schedule right rating on a two-week schedule is something that happens and, and you would see this on private servers for like the really high-end guilds they would raid on the last day of a reset and the first day of a reset so you raid two nights in a row and then you spend right all the time between that so almost two weeks uh being pvp spec and just like grinding honor and this would happen like at the beginning of a launch of a server and uh, i mean it's yep. something that's cool for sure but it's uh that something like that probably wouldn't exist anymore it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be as big of a deal because there won't be as many people doing pvp just to supplement their rating just to help out their uh their pve performance which again, I, I think it's fine, right? I mean, that's that that was like the vanilla meta. But then, if you put it in the second stage, where is where it's coming out with BWL? Uh, I don't know how many months after release, but original BWL came out, I think, like eight months after release. So I, I would presume that it would be somewhere between like six to eight months after release. Um, putting it in at the same time as that—that's so long to go without PVP rewards. Um, and, and, you know, maybe even the honor system. I, I'm assuming that that's when they're putting in the honor system because it doesn't really make sense to put in the honor system without putting in any rewards. Because then what's going to happen is people are going to farm honor and stuff. And then as soon as the rewards come out, like you're just whatever rank you are on the, on patch day, like you can get access to all that gear. Like, I, I don't know. That seems weird. So. Yeah. But, um, I mean, sorry, go ahead. I Tips. agree. Well, yeah, like specific with well, the PVP rewards, there's a couple of things that go into that too. It's like, what version of the PVP gear are we going to be getting? Um, are we getting the updated version? Are we not getting the updated version? That plays a big role. Uh, it, it, I guess it all depends. We, we don't really know. Um, but also you have ZG uh, and, and you have the world buffs associated with ZG. I think with the world buffs and ZG, BWL, I mean, it, I think I think it does have a similar effect with Dara Mall in the sense that it does kind of, it, it hurts the, the integrity of, of BWL's difficulty and stuff. Mm -hmm. But you've got the enchants too. I mean... Like, I don't understand why there isn't something between stage two and stage three. Why, why don't they just put ZG um, and the Green Dragons together as their own separate stage? Just because Green Dragons came before AQ anyway. Like, I, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, why did they go so far out of their way to, to have four stages in particular? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think they're, I don't, I don't know if they're trying to, like, limit, like, production time. Or I, I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to do exactly with it. So I, I, I would speculate they're doing it for two reasons. One, they said when they're designing Classic WoW, they're thinking 15 years down the road. I think they're looking for a, an easily replicatable cycle, like an easy repl replicatable content release timeline. Two, and this is total speculation on my part, but could be the case, 
if you remember when they were doing the uh, the Classic Wild BlizzCon panel back at BlizzCon uh, last month, early November, they said that they dug through old boxes and found a what was it like like a, a 1.12 database, and that that's that's what they're basing Classic Wild off of. Mm-hmm. It is possible. It is possible. I don't know. I don't know the 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 exact logistics of this. It is possible they don't have item databases for anything prior to 1.12. It is possible that we see Molten Core with an updated loot table. It is possible we see everything with updated loot tables, which is why they are basing, um, just hypothetical, Mm -hmm. if stage one releases with an updated loot table Molten Core, having Dharmal out at the same time or launching at the same time is not that big of a deal. Because you have updated molten core comparatively, because you have updated molten core loot tables. Dire Mall is mm-hmm. not that much of impact anymore. So if that could be what's going on behind the scenes. I have no freaking idea, but just that is I guess it's a possibility. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, That's I think interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think you have a good point about like I mean, if the loot is better in molten core than it was on release, then putting in Dire Mall at release, uh it, it, it doesn't make it as big of a deal. Uh I, I still think I still think it's it's a problem because it, it goes back to like the same concept of kind of like the small progressions and stuff. Now, now you're saying like that's that might be what they're thinking with this, but um, I don't know. I, I still think just having like the constant state of progression. I, I've talked about it before. You go you go to retail WoW and you get all your levels and you get one talent point every 15 levels, and it's just like I, I feel yeah. like my character's not progressing while I'm leveling, and that was like a big. And we, we just did Project 60, and, and it, it's still uh, it's still kind of going on a little bit, like, casually. People are raid logging and whatnot. But um, the, the big thing was just, like, the leveling just felt so boring. And they're, they're nerfing XP rates. Okay, I get that. But but the problem the problem isn't how slow you level. The problem is you don't feel like you're growing. You, you yeah. need the feeling of growth. You need the feeling of progression. Uh, you know, one level, one talent point. Not, one le- not 15 levels, one talent point. And, and the same thing, like that, that same idea, kind of bleeding into the the production of classic, I think, is not good. To to be like, okay, well, like let's just put all everything in there at once. Um, I don't think it's the end of the world if they release MC with the updated loot tables. I don't think it's the absolute end of the world. Uh, yeah. But I think having the actual content itself not split up more is is a yeah. big issue. I agree. I mean, here's the deal. Like, let's say I'm right. Let's say they up. Let's say let's say they're not doing progressive uh, loot tables or progressive itemization. It just is what it is. They're running off 1.12 itemization and loot tables. That's just that's just all they have. Okay. Let's say that's the that's the scenario. Um, how many people are really going to be walking around in full abyss? having Darmal out progressively? You know, two months later or whatever it might be. That's still content for a lot of people. Like mm-hmm. not everyone is going to be in molten Corbis within the first two or three months. So still, I still think there's a very strong argument to progressively release content, even if the gear isn't, you know, just trivializing everything before it and all that stuff. Still, progressively release it. I that, I still feel the same way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, we talked about PvP. We talked about ZG. Let's talk about ZG a little bit more. Actually, I feel like we didn't we didn't stay on ZG enough. Um, kind of getting into more of the specifics of having uh, ZG out with BWL. You have class shoulder enchants, mm-hmm. which they're, right. they're not good for everybody because not every shoulder enchant is... Um, it, it's designed for a specific role. Like the warrior shoulder enchant is like a... It's like a defense enchant. It's for it's for prop warriors, right? Uh, but But generally speaking, the shoulder enchants are things that are very good. Uh, there's like the class offset pieces that have been added in. Uh, it's kind of like I know for paladins, it's it's kind of like a meme set. Like you can do like some fun things with it. And it's kind of random, uh, but again, it's just another thing that's being introduced in the game that is uh, that's essentially a uh, it's an alternative way of gearing up your character based on like whatever your play style is. I think ZG being put in the game originally essentially as like a catch-up mechanic as something to kind of like help bridge the gap for players that are new to the game uh, while the game was growing I mean you, if you look at like population graphs for World of Warcraft it's like this I mean the, the game was just booming um, I think that having ZGN with BWL is something that you're immediately infusing BWL with a player base that has access to the enchants has access to offset gear if they want to use that at all and then uh, Bloodvine set, which is huge for all the casters. Uh, and then, of course, the world buffs. So the, the world buff is big. I mean, it, 
10% movement speed, which is cool. And then 15% all stats, which is like 150% of a Blessing of Kings. And it lasts for two hours and it doesn't, you, you don't lose it on death. Persists mm -hmm. through death, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's huge. Like that's actually a big buff for the sake of progression. Like Dire Maul, it's like, okay, you die, you lost him. But with ZG, it's it's much easier to get because you turn in one heart and everybody gets it and then you have it for two hours. It's not like everybody has to specifically go get their buffs for Dire Maul. If you die, you die. Uh, but ZG, the, the buff is really, really strong. It's huge. Uh, Bloodvine yeah, said, Z do you want to talk about that? Stay safe? Well, yeah, I was going to say just sort of briefly, ZG is when caster they start getting a lot of hit rating gear, which really mm -hmm. did, did not really exist prior to ZG. And casters get the Bloodvine set, which they're going to be wearing all the time. It looks really stupid. That sucks, but that's just the way it is. It's Biss. Uh, it's unfortunate. Um, but yeah, casters see it. All, uh, a big power spike with Zulgarub. And like you guys said, I think that having it out when, um, when Black and Lear, having, having BWL and ZG released at the same time, they should not do that. They should not do that. I think, I mean, we're just, I think the message we're all trying to hammer home with this classic cast is having more content release patches or stages or phases, whatever you want to call them, anything more than seven, whatever, that's ideal. More things to look forward to, more hype events. Um, that's that's what I'm trying to say. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel. And, and one thing we missed earlier, uh, this is just kind of small, but for priests and hunters, it's, it's kind of relevant. It's like, the uh, the benediction and uh, the Rook Delar quest lines also come oh. in much later, um, and that's, that's something that with Kazak up, I assume it'll probably be grouped in at launch too. And it's just like the, these small things, like again, like mm -hmm. small things to look forward to. They're all being clumped together, and again, it's taken away of that feeling of progression, taken away those like hype events that that could be there down the line. So, it's just mm -hmm. another another one of many examples that we've already discussed. Right, and uh, I, I think we didn't go into world bosses enough. Um, kind of to, to reel it back a little bit with world bosses having world bosses in the game and, and available right from the start means that by the time enough people get level 60 to kill it uh both azergos and kazakh will probably be up and so you have a situation where those bosses are just like sitting there waiting to be killed but in like a regular you know gameplay sort of thing like in the, in the, in the regular way of playing the game excuse me these two big world bosses are not going to be something that a player is going to come across. They're not going to see them. It's not no. like they're going to be like some, you know, looming figure like, man, I can't wait till, you know, somebody kills that guy that just came and killed me. It's not like a Fel Reaver in Burning Crusade, right? Mm -hmm. Like a Fel Reaver would come up and just like smoke you. Um, <laughs> but like, remember you used to see the ground <laughs> shape. Like, okay, I'm dead. Dude, it was bad. I remember the, I, like the worst was whenever they came up and uh, anyway, anyway, that's a different topic. But but with <laughs> but with uh, with the world bosses, basically, as soon as you get a group of people up there that they can go in and they can kill it, they can go in and, and they get a free kill, uncontested. An uncontested world boss is something that's huge. Um, I think that. You could say, oh, well, like, it's a reward for those players that rush to 60 uh, faster than anybody else. Okay, sure, but that that's not what it's about, right? That's not the whole point of it. Um, that guild, those players are going to be able to go in and uh, get world boss loot, and that immediately makes their guild stronger and more desirable than any other guild, which might be the case anyway if they have a, a full rate of level 60s first, but... It takes that it takes that quote advantage that they have and it, it makes it even higher. So I, I think that's something else that's not good. Yeah, I agree. I think having world bosses out from the launch, um, it, it rewards fast levelers and sort of it, it sort of screws over slow levelers or new players of the game. It just sort of solidifies the grasp that the top guilds and server have on them. I mean, this is the unfortunate reality about world bosses. Most people playing Classic WoW will never kill a world boss, let alone get a piece of gear, gear from a world boss. World bosses will be very tightly controlled for a very long time. Um, good guilds will have them. But there's no reason to release them early and and foster that control. Like the long the longer you you <laughs> I will, the longer you you delay the, the release of them, if they're not there at launch, that'll give more people a chance. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. Right. And again, just more hype. More hype whenever the, the world hype. bosses are released. Yep. So yep. I think I think that's a big uh, <clears throat> I think that's a big point of emphasis that uh, we're gonna. We're, I, I know I know that's the, I'm gonna keep saying it. More hype, 
the the more people are interacting the more people are playing the game the more people are engaged uh the better it is for everybody because like people are playing because they're having fun people want to progress their characters they want to keep doing their thing uh and if people play like Blizzard's gonna make more money. Like if if you if they want to make this about money or whatever in their business, sure I understand. Like this is better. <laughs> like this is I don't know. This is it's just better to to have more patches. Well, and, and the issue is, I was just gonna say I think the issue is it's better the first time around, maybe the second time around. But I think going back to what Stacey said, fifteen years down the line, I think that's what they're looking at. If they if they do. I mean, whatever method they stick with, they're gonna want to adopt it every single time and just template it every single time. Right. Again, first time it's going to add hype, second time, but like let's say 10 years down the line, it just means more overhead costs. And like every time you have to launch a new patch, you have, you know, maintenance that has to go into it. You have to do some testing. You have to ship it out to QA, like all the, all the basic like steps you have to do. You have to invest money in every single stage. So I think that's how they're looking at it, which is not a good thing. Like I know, I know, you know, obviously Blizzard has their, their financial prerogatives, but I hope that Classic WoW is not a discount project. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and and I would say that the QA, all this, like that stuff doesn't even matter. If you get it right, you get it right. And I, I, that's not to say that you'll never change anything ever. And, you know, you might have a cycle of class and be like, you know what? We kind of screwed this up this last time. Like it would be better if this if this was moved here or this was there. Uh, that's not to say that that shouldn't happen. But after the first time, it'll get so much easier. Like if, if they can do this correctly, if they can do this right, this is going to be a cash cow for them for 10 years, at least. Like, I mean, it, it's, they, they have that. If they want to put in expansions, people are going to play the expansions. There, there's so much to be done there. It, it would be for, for them to go in and, and to, to screw it up would be a real shame. Um, yeah, I, I, I like, I, I might be kind of like, I'm sounding kind of pessimistic or whatever, but I, I think it's, it's important to just kind of be honest. And whenever there, there is something that you feel like is, is a big issue that you, you go and you talk about it and you really explain why. And instead of, I mean, I, not just yeah. throw a pity party, but explain why you're throwing a pity party, I guess. But what uh, you're saying is it's in everyone's best interest for them to get it right. They're going to make a lot of money. We're going to have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. You're yeah, cutting like, out sort of, a little bit, of, by the way. Stay safe. Just occasionally. Like, Hello, am I good? Are we good? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to say one more thing sort of about the world bosses is, I mean, if they have like, uh, you know, one month after Molten Core, uh, one month after stage one releases, they have like a stage 1.5 or whatever world bosses, Azurgos and Kazakh are, are launched. Um, it's sort of like a mini AQ opening gates event. Like you're going to have tons of guilds swarming the spots. Everyone's going to be there. It's a huge server event. Like it's something we can look forward to. Same point, point, mm -hmm. point standing, more hype events. It's going to be badass. Rather than just having, you know, if it's, if it's there from day one and people have to level to 60, you have like a ragtag, like like the server first ragtag guild with full greens going and try to like, it's it's just, it's, it's not as much of a server event if mm -hmm. the, the fewer people involved there are. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. <clears throat> uh, is there anything else you guys want to talk about with stage two? That's stage two. PVP That's... rewards, BGs, BWL, ZG. I mm -hmm. think we got it all, dude. I think we did. Uh, the next stage, the next stage that they proposed was AQ, tier 0 0.5 gear, uh, sell this content, and the Emerald Dragons, the world bosses, all in together. Um, one thing I, I want to mention real quick, and I guess I should have said this at the beginning. I think that we're, we're technically making an assumption that when they say stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4, that they want to put these in as four separate patches because you know they they that's what they've told us right but when we've brought up these concerns right like whether it's on classic cast or on our streams or whatever like nobody's corrected us and said like oh no that's not what we meant by stages right so mm -hmm. uh, that's that's why that's why i think that they're that by stages they mean patches essentially just like packaged patches um so anyway back to stage three this is essentially like the 1.9 cluster. So right. having 0 0.5 in, the dungeon set 2, if, if you want to call it that, um, this was the gear that was put in in patch 1.10 that was an upgrade gear for the tier 0 gear. If you were Valor, you could upgrade your gear. If you were Lightforge, you could upgrade your gear. But for Paladins, like Lightforge turned to Soulforge, for example. Um, this is something cool because it's an alternative way of gearing up your character. Uh, something that's good for people who are, you know, more five man players. Maybe they do like solo PVP and stuff like that. Putting in more content for, uh, for everybody, right? Like, you know, the, the, the 
player base as a whole. It's not just focused yeah. on the high end. I think that's great. Uh, I really like tier 0 0.5 a lot, man. Like, mm -hmm. like you said, for people that maybe aren't huge in guild, guild gameplay rating or, or pre-made stuff, like it's actually getting a full set of tier 0 0.5 um, is a lot of content. It's, it's quite a tedious process. I think it's a lot of fun. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, I actually think that them putting in the tier zero point five gear with AQ forty is not. I don't. I don't think that's a big deal. I don't see that as a problem necessarily because the tier zero point five gear a lot of times uh, does get overlooked because it comes out so late in the game that mm -hmm. and it, it still might honestly coming out with AQ it'll probably still get overlooked. Uh, but at least you're you're providing something that whenever like the high end gets this, there's something else out there that, that you can strive to and, and kind of use to be like, hey, like, you know, I'm, I'm a five man player, whatever. I started playing the game later. Uh, I can go in and I can like progress my character a little bit doing ZG, doing uh, the tier 0 0.5 quest chain, getting into maybe an MC pug at that point in the server or getting into like a more casual guild. And, and you have some some ways that you can keep progressing your character throughout that time. Uh, so that's something that I, I really don't have a big problem with. I, I think uh, I think it's good even that they want to put in tier 0 0.5. Uh, I do think that if they, you know, and this is this is the concept of progressive itemization that's playing in here. Um, if they put in the, if they want to upgrade the PvP rewards later on, I think upgrading the PvP rewards could be done at the same time. I think they could be done here and it would probably be a good idea uh, as opposed to upgrading them in the next patch. Because by the time you upgrade them in the next patch, it's like, it's almost trivial, right? Like it's it's something that's kind of like okay, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this kind of keeps with that same philosophy of an alternative way of gearing up your character. Like the AQ40 gear is better, but for you know, uh, you know, speaking from the perspective of a paladin, of course, a rat paladin. Yeah, okay, the AQ40 gear is better because it's rat gear. Um, but you're gonna have better gear coming out of AQ40 as a whole. But the PVP gear. Uh, is more stamina heavy, kind of has better stat allocation for the case of PvP, and, and kind of goes along with that same, uh, that same thought, uh, that same philosophy. So if they do this, I think they should also upgrade the PvP gear later on uh, with the same stage as AQ40. But still, is yeah. content. And sorry, go ahead. I've been talking for a while. Uh, I was gonna say, I think that's the time to do it. I was gonna ask you and Tips, what do you guys think about uh, about the World Dragons, Green Dragons, mm -hmm. before, after AQ? What do you think about that? I, I think it should be before. I agree. I think before AQ. I think there should probably be a stage between stage two and three um, with like ZG world, ZG green dragons or something. Don't you think it's, mm -hmm. it's so intuitive. Like it's, and they're very close together. Like um, during original vanilla, I, I don't understand why you wouldn't put those two together. Green dragons come before AQ with yeah. ZG allow you to farm up nature resist gear. Like I, I, yeah, I would put it that way. Yeah. And you might want to like stagger it a little bit. Like if you, because I think whenever the green dragons are put in, the server opens up and the dragons spawn. I believe. I, I could be wrong on this, but I, you know, I, I could be misremembering. But I think that if they withheld for a few days or whatever, so it's like ZG launch and then like a week later you put in the dragons or something, uh, I think that wouldn't be bad either. But uh, I, I think putting in the dragons with AQ40, then you're taking away the concept of people competing for these world dragons to farm up nature resist gear for their tanks and uh, for their soakers for raid, you know, for, yeah. for who who run, you need 15 people to have like nature resist cap so they can, uh, or soft cap so they can, uh, so they can soak the poison bolts. I think not having that in, which is like a key, I, I would say for the high end guilds, it's like a key point of progression uh, for them. Your average guild is not going to be killing world bosses. Your average guild is not going to have the opportunity to even... Or the average player is not even going to have the opportunity to, to get a piece of loot from the world dragons. But mm. it's a cool experience. It's something that exists. And it's something that I think is good for the game to have that in beforehand. And to uh, increase the value of killing those bosses before AQ40 comes out. And farming nature resist gear through other means. As opposed to picking up the nature resist gear inside of AQ40. So green dragons, Moradon, um, stuff like that. I, I think that's a big deal. I agree. Actually, you want to know something? I think I think we're all agreeing too much. I have actually changed my mind on all of it. <laughs> Imagine this. Imagine this. Only one content release stage. Everything is out from the very start, and you have Molten Core and Xramas out at the same time. I think that'd be badass. I've changed my mind. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing. I, I mean, we. I said this at the beginning of the podcast. Like, um, we, we all kind of feel the same way about this topic, and this is more of a... Uh, this is more of, of us kind of like you know, breaking this down and really sharing our opinion. And, you know, while, while, 
you know, I'd like to bring up other viewpoints and, and we've done that a little bit is like, well, they could be seeing it like this. They could be seeing that, hey, nobody cleared. The first clear of MC was not until after Dire Mall came out. The first time Rag died was not until Dire Mall came out. So they might be seeing it as like, well, like, you know, they, they might need Dire Mall for the first clear, which is, I mean, I, I don't know why they would think that, but, but that's not the case, right? The same thing for ZG. I, I don't think, uh, I think Nefarian wasn't killed until after ZG launched. So I, I think that's, you know, l looking at these other perspectives and stuff, I, I think is very important. But, um, oh, yeah. I mean, you, you can, I, I, I don't want to start an old player versus new player argument, but you can go back and, mm -hmm. read, and their itemization is just all over the place. Like they, they just had no idea what was going on. Yeah. The, the, what, what players in Vanilla WoW these days can get out of their, get out of their character with gear and different specs and consumables and world buffs. What you can what you can squeeze out of your player, the extra damage, the extra healing, or extra threat per second, all of it, you can just you can just accomplish so much more. And these roadblocks that people, um, my mic is, are we good? Hello, hello. Yeah, these good. these these roadblocks um, that people faced back in the day are not going to have the same severity or impact um, in modern day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a different time. And I see some people in the chat saying, you know, bring somebody on to disagree. And again, we normally we do sometimes disagree on some things. But with this particular issue, I, I would <laughs> it's be like, there's not it's, it's yeah, hard. I'd like there's shocked. not a lot of people that disagree with this. <laughs> and that's and that's kind of the point of what we're doing today. And that's why we wanted to talk about it yeah. is the community. I would be willing to bet is, is vastly uh, unified in the fact that this these stages are not enough. Uh, they're insufficient. Mm -hmm. Everybody I've seen from all all across the spectrum, from forums to YouTube videos, everybody at least believes there should be bare minimum five, if not six, at the bare minimum stages, and um, it, it does negatively affect the game with less stages. That's what we that's what we legitimately believe. So we want to bring awareness to this issue because fundamentally we do think if the stages stay as they are, it would produce a less exciting experience than if there were six, seven uh, stages. That's why we're talking about. It. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess what we're up. saying, I guess what we're saying is, uh, we hope that someone from Blizzard is watching and, and listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, with uh, with stage three, the we, we've talked about tier zero point five. We talked about you know that's whenever AQ launches, essentially the one point nine package. Uh, Green dragons that that shouldn't come out at the same time as AQ. I say AQ forty. It's also AQ twenty. They come out together. Uh, and then also the, the Silithus content. So by that, they mean like the AQ40 event and all this stuff. That's what I'm assuming they mean by that. Like the AQ40 event and then all the Sonorian Circle stuff, all that stuff being put into the game. Um, is there anything else we want to touch on there before we go on to Nax? I think we got it. Yeah, I think Green Dragons need to come out at, maybe with Zilgrub or at least before AQ. T0.5 is fine with AQ. I'm fine with that. Um, let's do stage four. You guys ready? Nax out, Pog. Nax out. Mm -hmm. Nax out. Uh, I think stage four is pretty much just Nax patch. That that was the impression I got when they said Nax and Scourge Invasion. I mean that's the that's the one point eleven patch. So yeah, that's uh, all it says is Nax Ramus raid, comma Scourge Invasion. That's it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think uh, I think that's fine. I mean I think that's what the Nax phase should be. I think should probably be just that. Um, talking about PvP gear again. The PvP gear gets updated with the Nax patch, but uh, I mean, if if they do the upgrades, if they if they have the lower version and they upgrade it later on, which I think is important, because then you're just going to have PvP gear in the game put in with BWL that's you know better than the PW the, better than the BWL gear. But um, I think if they want to upgrade it, I think upgrading it with AQ is is probably a good idea as opposed to upgrading with Nax. Yeah, I agree. And, and they they definitely should upgrade it before, like. So so back in vanilla, I think they upgraded it was and they upgraded in patch one eleven, right? The PP mm -hmm. gear. Yeah. Like if they did that, there would be next to no incentive to rank, period. Because the gear simply is not good enough to justify rank. In some cases there would be, but it's just it's much worse. But at the same time, if you release the PvP gear updated at Blackwing Lair patch, that's also a problem because then the gear is too overpowered for too long. So that's why private servers have have kind of messed around with when they update things. I think on NOS, they updated the PvP gear at like ZG patch or around there um, while releasing the, the Battlegrounds at launch. So this is a very like contentious issue um, that be people have been messing around with for a number of years. But like basically, 
PvP gear should not be updated when it was, in my opinion, back in vanilla. It should be updated earlier, but not too early. And that's that's kind of what we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. No changes. No Wait, change. small, cha small change. Small, small, st small changes. <laughs> so I've I've not actually <laughs> ever raided 40 next Ramus. Um, or even step foot in 40 man next Ramus. I've never played during next patch in vanilla WoW. So I think there's unique Scourge Invasion gear, right? Is that right, guys? And yeah. then there's also there's also gear that's added um to the Eastern Plague Lands uh um Argent Dawn vendor. Um a lot of the, like there's a there, I know there's a trinket that's really good. There's a lot of good gear that's added with that. Uh not even mentioning the actual gear that drops in next Ramus. So how how good is the Scourge Invasion unique event gear? How good is that stuff? Uh, I think that it's, it's honestly not that good. Like if people are, if people, if people have been gearing up, this is what, this is what I would assume that the, the intention is mm -hmm. whenever they put in that gear, it's like, okay, people who are new to the game or people who, you know, they haven't been mm -hmm. raiding or whatever, they at least have some gear that they could put on. Like, you know, the, the, I, I forgot what it's called exactly, but it's like some kind of undead slaying chess piece. And it's like a ton of attack power versus undead. They'll have gear that they could put on that might be specific to Nax. Uh, you know, good for the raid, specific to Nax, right? Uh, as opposed to using that gear in BWL or whatever. Um, if you've been raiding consistently and you, if you're in a guild that is planning on completing Nax, then you probably have gear better than that anyway. But uh, the undead, right. the, the undead slaying gear, it's good, but I, I don't think it's better than the than the gear that people would have already if they're raiding consistently. So the real reason to get the Scourge Invasion gear is so that 15 years later, when they've progressed onto classic BFA, you can have it in your transmog set. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, yeah. Just there you, so you can get your transmog <laughs> and you know your flying mounts and your achievements and all that stuff, dude. It's great. Yeah, good. <laughs> no, uh, no, but yeah, I think um, I think I think that the the idea for stage four, at least what we know of it, I, I think is just fine. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I I think like minimum we would want to see six stages and really i i think the more they they parse and or not parse spread the stuff out the better mm -hmm. like if they if they wanted to do 11 like it actually was go for it yeah yeah <laughs> but, i think uh sorry go ahead but four four is four is just too few that's all i was gonna say it they they should really not do four man yeah i think four is bad so i, I want to talk about this uh and i made I made my long BlizzCon story video where, where I talked about the entire story of BlizzCon. And uh, I, I talk about this in that video, but I, I thought it'd be fun to kind of bring that in here and we can kind of discuss it. And I want to I want to get your guys' opinions, too, uh, on, on what I'm saying that might be a good idea. I don't necessarily think that, like, my my proposal for phase content release, which is at 7, which is a lot of, like, middle ground like uh, like middle ground proposals like well you know if, if they want to do this like what if they did this right um right. i don't think it's necessarily the best way to do it but i think it's a way that they could do it that's better than the current proposal um okay so let's go into that I, and we all feel about this we, we already talked about this mc and nixia mart on on launch uh i think i think that's something that's uh, we we all kind of agree on that um right yeah you know, so I said like maybe like a month and a half, two months later, they should put in the 1.3 patch with like Dire Mole and the world bosses. What do you guys think about putting that? When do you guys think they should put that patch in? Oh man, like, so I, you know, we have more of like an upper level player mindset. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to think what percent of people are gonna be 60 at the month and a half mark? Less than half, I think less than half, like for real. I think month and a half mark. I dude, would say, our, 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 dude, freaking nope. Like it's gonna be like five percent of players. I'm think serious. Over, oh, overall players, dude. Yeah. So recently, uh, there were some stats that were released about uh, one to sixty play times. Yeah. On even some more. Um, well, I was I was looking at this service. too, right? I was yeah. looking at this too, and uh, sorry, go ahead. Days. Uh, yeah, it like was 11 over 11 days played on a server that a lot of people have played that server before or played vanilla before. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, you're, if we're talking about classic, most of the people haven't played classic before. You're talking 12 to 13 days minimum played. And if we're talking, you know, if you can only spend, you know, two hours a day, three hours a day, like the average player can, maybe even less than that. Yeah. 
then we're talking like three, four months for most people to hit 60, I would say. Well, I would say that there's a lot of people playing that haven't played before as well. Like, I know that was the case for me. Like, at some point, right. everybody everybody played for their first time. Like, everybody who played on a private server played worse. for the first time. Um, now, for me, like, I had played vanilla before, but a lot of the people that I played with in my guild hadn't played vanilla before. Uh, there, there's a, I would say, a, a big, like, a, a large number of the player base that is the same thing's going to happen in Classic that haven't played vanilla before at all uh, on a private server or in retail so i think uh like okay let's say 12 right let's say there were 12 days played was the average hypothetically and then um 12 days slash played so mm -hmm. times 24 hours and then divide that by like three hours a day 96 so that's that's about three months over, over three months yeah, yeah a little bit over so you have to ask yourself Let's say you have, well, let's compare. Um, Dire Mall, Azure Ghost, Kazakh coming out after 1.5 months or after three months. What's worse for the health of Classic WoW? Um, having. And it came out four that, months initially. Four months from NA launch yeah. and one month from EU launch. So what's worse? Having your super turbo nerd players that are hitting 60 very early and MC Nixie and on for months, having them be a little bit bored for, for two months, or. Um, having, you know, the vast majority of the Classical player base feel left out of the Dire Mall launch, of the Azure Ghost launch, of the Kazakh launch. I, I would rather have a bored 1% um, player base than a 99% player base that feels like they missed out on a big hype event, honestly. So I, I would be in favor of a... I, I think three months is just fine for Dire Mall, Azure Ghost, Kazakh. I really do. I think that's fine. I think 1.5 is too fast. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you want LFR, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what, what do you want? That, to no, that's exactly this? right. <laughs> uh, well, honestly, um, I mean, I, I I definitely agree with like the rationale, but I think it's dangerous to base decisions based on what the vast majority of players want or like casual players want, because I think you can make the argument that that's kind of what got us to where we are now. Um, but I do I do think I, I do agree that you cannot design a game around you know point one percent of the player base and whatnot. I would say three months, dude. Three months. Yeah, like, three months. For, yeah, three months, as it was back in the day, basically. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like a, a middle ground there. Well, so yeah. the reason why I said two months is because I thought, and like I said, I, I don't think the the way that I thought up is, is the best way to do it or the way to do. It. I just think it's a way that's better than what they're saying. Um, I said that at the three month mark is whenever they should probably put in the honor system, uh, and kind of have. Well, I, I think that if at the three month mark they put in the honor system and, you know, if they could upgrade MC loot back then or at that point, too, then great. If they want to have MC loot at launch, then it is what it is uh, or the upgraded MC loot, excuse me. But putting that at the three month mark and then putting BWL and, and the Dark Moon Fair and stuff at the six month mark, then you have like a three month window for like a Gen 1 ranker to get Grand Marshal by the time BWL comes out. It, it's kind of the way that I was thinking about it because I'm. Actual vanilla, and this is something to keep in mind, actual vanilla lasted, I think, about 25 months, or like 20, 24 and a half months before patch 2.0 uh, from launch. It was the exact date, I, I think. It was, it was early December 2006, and then November 2004 is whenever, uh, is whenever uh, vanilla came out, whenever WoW came out initially. So having like a 24 to 25 month kind of like time frame to look at like the lifespan of Classic... I think, or of a, a classic server, I think it's a good way of looking at it. So that's the, that's kind of like the assumption I went with uh, whenever I said maybe going like a month and a half or two months and then at three months putting in the honor system. Um, so this is talking kind of about three at the same time. But if, let's say Dire Mall, like you guys said, let's say Dire Mall is in at the three month mark. Do you think that, when do you think the honor system would be put in? I would do honor system at four months. So zero month MC Nixie Mordon, three month Dire Mall Azure Ghost Kazakh. I saw someone say people don't get hyped for Dire Mall release. That is absolutely wrong. Dire Mall release is big. It's hype. It's big. It hundred percent is. And then that's at three months. And I would do the honor release battlegrounds at probably four months or four and a half months. Month and a half later, at the six month mark, BW Whale and Dark Moon Fair. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do so far. Yeah, yeah, I would do the exact same. That's how. That's basically how it was. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. and, and BWL initially came out eight months after launch. I think that, I think going that whole time, what, how do you guys feel about that? How do you guys feel about BWL and Dark Moon Fair coming out eight months after launch instead of six months? 
Why why would you bump it back at eight, to eight months? No, well, no, no. How how do you guys feel about eight months versus six months? Uh, I would say it's probably too late. Yeah, that's what I would say. I'm okay with it. I think it's fine. But yeah, again, like I don't I don't see the two months as being too drawn out. I, I think it's fine. See, so but, yeah, I was looking at it whenever whenever I was thinking about six months for BWL. Uh, I was thinking that just kind of calling back on experience the time like I, I remember people were getting like bored of doing molten core basically they were just people were getting bored like right before bwl came out it was one of those things like okay like you know doing yeah. this for half a year right uh i think i think that's kind of the point when people kind of start to mentally deteriorate and they're like okay i'm getting bored and i have nothing to do i think having i think having eight months of, of mcn is probably is probably too long that's true i agree uh though and i i actually agree with you i, I think eight months is too long i'm in favor of Mm -hmm. But for the to keep in mind, for the vast majority of the player base, it's not eight months of MC Anixia. It's more like four months or you know five months, or because they have to level. They're just going to level slow. There, there, there will be guilds that are hard stuck on Gar and Molten Core for three weeks. Yeah, like there, these are you have to think about these people. Um, so yeah, I that even that being said, I think that a six month BWL is is ideal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, that's something that you know. I struggled with like I remember like we wiped on Gar a ton <laughs> in vanilla but uh and, and and on the other end like we had trouble with like you know people getting all their gear and then like they, they didn't just want to like they, they didn't they would either start raid logging or they would stop raiding altogether and then you have to deal with attrition right because people get bored um if if Dire Mall came out three months after launch if Dire Mall came out three months after launch and keep in mind three months after launch with no honor system so on private servers people have the honor system and they have pvp gear and they have stuff that they yeah. can do beforehand and then so that so they have like they can make their own content for a few months before dire yeah. mall comes in uh back in retail vanilla making your own the game was all the content because like people had to learn yeah. right the, the learning process it's still going to be there for a lot of players uh but the resources that increase you know your your the effectiveness of your learning are going to be a lot more um yeah. so you're asking like what are the top players going to do during these three months right and and i know like um, you know like you said like it's not it's not good to to base the game around the one percent right um but i think there's like a happy medium there like well i i, and three I think there's an answer go ahead I'll, I'll tell you what i do during these three months this is the time if you're if you're in a in an upper end guild you're leveling alts you're leveling. This is the perfect time to level alts. By the mm -hmm. by, this you can have you can have three level sixty. You're good to go. Technically, you got you got. By the time BWO is out, you if you're in a super super, the in a super nerd guild, uh, you can have three BWO split runs if you want. Like uh, that is the perfect time to level alts. Yeah, mm -hmm. level a that's, mage, farm diamond, get gold. Yeah. Yeah, that's stuff you can do. Yeah, you know, for the three months, and then you could say honor system at four months instead. Well, I think if you go three. And then four months for honor system, and then at the six month mark, what if you went seven month mark to have three months of the honor system before BWL? Or maybe you would purposely say, you know what, you can't get Grand Marshal before BWL comes out. I, I honestly like that more. I like that more to be honest. But you know, we're just, we're just we're just sort of you know just goofing around. But I I, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like going into, it, I like going into Blackwing Lair without you know twenty freaking melee DPS with uh, rank fourteen weapons. I like that. <laughs> I yeah. think I think that's more fun. It's more of a challenge. I think it's it's just better for everyone. I think. Yeah, I, yeah, I do think you're right about the more of a challenge and stuff. Um, going three and then four months, so you have an out. You have a month of Dire Mall before the battlegrounds and the honor system is put in. Yeah, I think uh, I think I think that would be fine too. And then you stay at six months with BWL. What I said after BWL and Dark Moon Fair at six months, I said that like the seven and a half or eighth eight month mark. So two months after BWL is when they should put in ZG and the Emerald Dragons. Uh, I think that in Retail Vanilla, ZG came out two months after BWL. And I think kind of staying on that same sort of time frame would be, would be just fine. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think it's perfect. I agree. A month and a half, ZG, Emerald Dragons come out. Um, so you're having Emerald Dragons and ZG come out maybe like two fifths of the way through classic wow's life cycle i think that's probably fine mm -hmm. yeah if you went like two months after yep. bwl 
So then that would, yeah. I guess, be at like the eighth month, eight month, eight month mark. Excuse me. And right. then after that, I said a year after launch is whenever AQ40 would be put in. AQ40 was put in January of 2006, I believe, which would have been, uh, I guess, 14 months. So yeah, I guess for, it was like the beginning. So like like 13, 13 ish months, right? Thirteen ish months uh, after launch. So if you went at like the twelve month mark and then you put in AQ, then that gives you more time because you have. I, I don't know. Did you? So I, I felt kind of rushed. I, f I feel rushed in AQ forty because you have the period of time before the gates actually open, and different servers are going to open the gates at different yeah, times. Let me ask you this. Okay. If if there is a server that is just dead set on opening the gates as fast as possible, they don't they don't care about mass farming, you know, uh, black carotid crystals, the mounts, they don't care at all. They just want to open the gates and get in as fast as they possibly can. What is the fastest you think a server could do that? What do you think? And they have all the stuff, the, the mats and stuff ready beforehand. Um, They've got it all ready to go. What, what do you think? I mean, they might be able to do this first week. Just on first week? Maybe. Yeah. No, definitely. It, you need at least five days, right, for the supplies to get to sell this. So, you, honestly, if, if the servo is really motivated and they don't change the supply quantities at all and they don't alter which supplies you get, dude, you could you could have it in five days if you really want to. But Yeah. I mean, yeah. realistically, it would probably not be till the second week. With, I mean, unless you have 100% everything ready to go day one or day Dep three. Yeah, it depends on the server. I, I can totally see some servers like totally just like four months in advance, all the top guilds get together. Okay, we know what we're going to do. We know what we need, stockpile. And yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. possible. So what I'm inclined to say, and I, I'm curious to know what you guys think about this. Whenever you think you should release AQ, I would say whatever whatever that gate opening um, time gate is, if it's a week or two weeks, I'd say release it a week or two weeks earlier than you would otherwise release it to accommodate for the time gate. Does that make sense? So you you want people going in AQ to a certain day, and then you need to release it two weeks earlier, one week earlier, six days, whatever whatever it might be. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, I see what you're saying. That's that's, that's probably what I would do. That's kind of that's kind of what I was thinking with saying it should be like 12 months after launch because that's like 13 it was about 13 months after launch uh back in retail so like you have like that month because you might have you might have a guild that goes in and says no we're not opening aq40 we're gonna get 10 people mounts you know what i mean like there might there might be like you know guilds could get together and like you have like two guilds that wait like five weeks and they get they get mounts for a total of like 10 people or something you could you could have people like basically holding the server hostage that's something that is possible um so that, that's that's why i felt like aq40 uh was kind of rushed in uh at least in in my like private server experience because I, I didn't I, I didn't i didn't finish aq40 and i didn't finish nax in uh i didn't clear nax in uh in retail vanilla but it was one of those things where it's like okay if you go aq40 and then six months later is whenever nax comes out because in retail vanilla nax came out in june after aq40 aq20 came out in january um you account for the time that takes for the the gates to open up whatever it feels like nax comes in super super fast so i i think having like that six month time period is uh i think that's fine but mm -hmm. uh it's fine because of the amount of content that you could put in to 1.9 like if they put in the pvp gear update if they put in the uh they put in the tier 0 0.5 if they put in the upgraded dungeon gear i mean there's, there's upgraded dungeon gear they're like i, I call them the nax blues and it's mm -hmm. it's actually the patch before nax where they they start putting them all in but that's more content like that's that's a very like content heavy patch uh potentially so doing that for like six months before nax comes out i think is uh that's i i feel like that's that's plenty of time you could maybe go even longer um how do you guys feel about that yeah, I think that's fine. And then you, you, that leaves six months, eight months, seven months around there of, you know, after Nax is out, that gives people on seven months, whatever it might be, um, on Nax Ramus with Nax being out. And I think, I actually think people probably want that. I think there's a huge desire for people to have their characters in full T3 and farm, you know, at TS. And pe people want, pe they're, they're, I think there's in the classic community, there's a big desire from people to be literal bis and sit on mm -hmm. that and PVP with it and AFK and Iron Forge. I think that's that's been a lot of people's dreams for a very long time. So if you have eight months of Nax at the end of Classic WoW, I think that's probably fine. If you get bored, whatever, you wait for you wait for whatever happens next TBC or whatever. I think that's fine. Like I'm fine with that. 
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, uh, one thing to consider, and I kind of want to go back a little bit and talk about this, is having the honor system in later. Uh, I, I we we I, I should have I think we touched on this a little bit, but I want to reemphasize it. Uh, you know, whenever we're talking about Blizzard saying the honor system come out with BWL, I think it's important that the honor system needs to come out you know, sooner, you know, the three or four month mark, maybe, um, as opposed to coming out with BWL and it should come out in its own phase because the longer you wait for the honor system to come out, the less desirable PVP is going to be. And I, I think that's important is that, or for, for them to put out the honor system at a point where like, you're not saying like, you know what, I don't really need the honor gear. Uh, I, there's nothing I really want to get cause I'll, I'll just raid and do whatever. Um, I think that's an okay mentality to have, uh, but I think to not have it in a little bit earlier, like it was in retail vanilla, and say, "Hey, you know, this is a this is an alternative for me. This is something else I can do." I, I don't know. That's that's just kind of how I feel about it in general. Yeah. One one thing I guess uh, I kind of glossed over. I I actually would prefer that the honor system comes out maybe just a month or you know six weeks before battlegrounds. I think that would be a cool, unique experience. I hope that's the case. So mm -hmm. maybe maybe even the honor system and battlegrounds are a bit staggered. They um, should I, be. I, I yeah. think they should be. So I think I think that that I mean there's there's everyone everyone thinks of Tar Mill versus South Shore, also Black Rock Mountain honor farming. Yeah. I think I think that's awesome. I think they should I think they should recreate that. Uh, and and that's yes. how it was in vanilla. Um, yeah. Yeah. I could see it. I could see it either way. To be honest, I, I could see it either way. Uh, there's also the concept of even staggering out like when each battleground comes out, which I don't think they're going to do that, uh, you know, because that's what they did in vanilla, right? They had yeah. the different battlegrounds come out at different times. Um, yeah. But I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't know which way would be better, but I would I would not have a problem with battlegrounds and honor system being put in at the beginning or not at the beginning, put in together. Uh, I don't think they should be put in at the beginning. Yeah, I, I very strongly think they should not be in at the beginning. Like, I mean, we've we've talked about that a million. Times, but mm -hmm. We're sort of asking why we why we don't think they should. Mm -hmm. I mean, having the honor system out early on in vanilla WoW, it, one it trivializes gear, or sorry, it trivial. Well, it does trivialize. It trivializes um, the difficulty of the early raids. I mean, the second you go into black, I mean, this we see us on private servers. People go into Blackwing layer um, with an entire roster of rank fourteen melee DPS. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's good. It trivializes the gear and the difficulty of Molten Core and Nixia, all these all these uh, earlier dungeons and raids. Um, I think that, you know, we're talking about catering to the majority and not the 1%. The rankers, the hardcore rankers that we might have in chat, the hardcore rankers are an extreme minority. An extreme minority. And they'll be an even smaller minority um, in Classic WoW. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you were a new player to Classic WoW, maybe you haven't played before, you haven't played since Vanilla WoW, you played 15 years ago, um, I think having to worry about leveling, finding a guild, progressing through Molten Core, um, getting gold for your Epic Mount, and ranking all at the same time, I think that can be very overwhelming. And it will just, it'll just be another very wide gear gap between new players and players that are able to start farming honor very early on. It's just another way that top players will be able just to absolutely just dust new players. And I, I, I think that's, I mean... I don't even think there really needs to be an argument uh, like I'm presenting because it wasn't there in Vanilla WoW. It was not there for the first four months of Vanilla WoW. That's how I think it should stay. Okay. <clears throat> That's how I feel. Um, do uh, I think, guys, I, I think we're... Uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to keep like talking in circles, right? Uh, but I think this is something that... Uh, we all feel really strongly about. And that's one more thing I, I really want to emphasize is that what the way Blizzard has proposed it with only four phases of content release is something that is uh, just like I said earlier, not good for anybody. I don't think it's good for Blizzard. I don't think it's good for the health of the game. Like I don't think it's good for Blizzard financially. I don't think it's good for the health of the game. Uh, I don't think it's good for the player base. I, I, I think that and this is something uh, you know not to go off on a tangent, but you know whenever I talk about it being good for Blizzard financially versus being good for the game, at the end of the day, that's the same thing. And this is something that I think everybody should consider, right? Whenever something is good, right? Whatever company they are, if, if a company says like, hey, like let's make our game as good as possible. Let's make it fun. At the end of the day, that takes care of a lot of problems. That keeps a lot of issues from happening. I think 
if that's what the focus is, is like, hey, let's do classic right. Let's make sure it's fun. Let's make sure like, make, let's make sure it's done correctly. Then people are going to sub. People are going to pay to play the game. People want to do that. So th there's no need to think about like all these little things. Like stop stop looking at everything over there. Just look at what's right in front of you, and that's the game. So I, I think I think that's a big deal. I think that's something that's really important. Um, from here, guys, I kind of want to I kind of want to go into Q and A. Uh, if, you, if you guys have any questions for us, we'll take some questions from the chat. Uh, we'll take some questions from Twitter. If you guys want to tweet at us with hashtag Classicast, we'll, uh, we'll, look at those t we'll look at those tweets. We'll look at some questions from chat. If, uh, if you guys haven't already subbed to our YouTube channels, if you guys haven't already followed myself or tips or stay safe, uh, you guys should go ahead and feel free to do that. If, if mods, if you guys could post their, uh, post their, the, the links to their channels in chat, uh, I would be greatly appreciative of that. Um, and th and that's the thing. Like our, our our channels are all focused on uh, classic WoW. I mean, that's that's the thing. Like we're playing other games, and you know, we play some retail. We're we're playing other games right now, and that's that's just kind of the nature of it. While we're waiting for classic, uh, but at the end of the day, that's that's what we're all really excited for, and um, what we're all very very passionate about. So I do appreciate that's you guys crazy. for following. Yeah, I was surprised. <clears throat> this is I actually didn't even know it, it snuck up. This is class cast number twenty, man. It like that. This is there. There's been twenty of these things, man. It's it's actually wild. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty wild. Pretty wild to have to have twenty episodes so far. Um, it's been a long time, brother. Yeah, long yeah. Time. It's been it's been real long. Um, okay. Let me let me go ahead and load up Twitter here. Do you guys have anything else you guys want to you guys want to mention? Um, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, I do. I, I do want to mention one thing real quick. Um, so. Today is Monday, and uh, we started the Classic Cast today at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And I think 4 mm. p.m. Pacific Time, I believe, is midnight European time. Correct me if I'm wrong, Europeans. Mm -hmm. But from here on out, I believe we will be doing the Classic Cast at this time um, bi-weekly, SFAN, or, or weekly? Yeah, I think we're, we're looking at doing it bi-weekly right now, and thanks for mentioning this. Um, we are going to be doing Classic or uh, Classic Cast every, every couple of weeks for, for at least the next few episodes. <sighs> Uh, as we kind of see like what kind of classic news and information and, and other stuff that comes up uh, that, that, you know, we think is, is important to talk about. Uh, there's not a whole lot of news right now, really. There's, there's not a whole lot of classic news, but as soon as stuff comes out, then, then surely we'll ramp it up and uh, maybe go back to a weekly schedule. Doing them Monday nights and yeah. then posting them on my YouTube channel later on so people can go mm -hmm. check out the VODs there. Just to be clear, not twice a week, every other week. <laughs> yeah, right, every right, other week. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, I, I did see someone say a couple of minutes ago that uh, guilds will not have entire like rank 14 rosters or like loaded with rank 14 mainly DPS by the time Black Moon comes out. That is absolutely wrong. Like uh, that that does happen. <laughs> that that does happen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it does. Um, I also put out a tweet earlier uh, where I kind of mentioned this, right? That, that there's a growing concern about only four phases of content release. So if you guys... If you guys agree with this, and and you might not, and that's fine, um, but if you guys do agree with with what what we're saying here, uh, you guys can go to my Twitter, twitter.com/svantv, and if you guys hit it with a like or if you retweet it and just kind of show your support that way, uh, I, I do think that's something that is uh it's it's very appreciative, and you know every everything counts, right? No doubt, no doubt. Um, and I mean, it, it's having this discussion is just very important because it. I mean, clearly, clear, and this is you guys can can vouch for this. The classic devs are actually very receptive. Like they're watching videos, watching podcasts. They're they're speaking to content creators. They're they're reading forums. They're communicating with people. They want to know what we think. And having these discussions is in in a clear, concise, articulate, sort of non ragey manner. I think is actually very important. So um, it is important. If you guys you know like or retweet something like that, um, there is a very good chance that they will see that and maybe it'll hit home with them. Absolutely, it's mm -hmm. very important. Brian Birmingham, the lead technical guy, like basically the lead guy on, on Classic WoW, he's based, dude. He's really, he's really based. I think he's a really good guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what are the chances of a Classic Cast Allcraft crossover episode when we get closer to release? Uh, well, we've done one before. We did one a few weeks before BlizzCon, so uh, I, I don't know. I can't really, I can't really speak to that, but I think, uh, I think that's something that that would be cool. I mean, we we would certainly be up for doing that again, uh, whether it was over over with them or over here with us uh, but yeah that's that's not something to to really get into too much now 
but I, I do appreciate the question, uh, Kalovich. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think, this is from Talric. Talric asks, do, and this is in the chat, do you think Classic will have seasons, like in Diablo, that will reset every year or so? Um, kind of going back to the release timeline, I think going with that original 24, 25 month kind of cycle uh, in terms of, you know, the, the lifespan of a, of a Classic server, I think it's best to stick to that. I think doing doing an, anything kind of faster than that, if you did it every year, it would kill off the other servers. There's like this obsession with fresh, right? The concept of going over and starting fresh and the hype that surrounds it. Everybody's rushing to 60 and gearing up. And it is a really exciting time. Like the opening of a fresh server is really, really exciting. But I think if they were to open up new classic fresh servers uh, in the middle of the lifespan of like the last set of servers that, that were created, I think that would be something that's a really bad idea. And and yeah, I, I, I think uh, I I don't understand Diablo so much because I, I didn't I haven't played it before. Do the seasons cause your character to reset completely? I'm pretty it, I'm pretty sure it's been it's okay. been several years since I've played Diablo. But yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, People yeah, are gonna I mean, want to play their character like they're gonna want to have their character. Yeah. You know, and whether yeah. we, we've talked about this, putting it on a holding server, you know, stasis server, whatever you want to call it, and then you know. You have your characters there with a whole bunch of other people that you know they merge that them together or they copy onto that server and everybody can play together who just wants to play 112 forever uh, as opposed to re-rolling fresh i think that's a lot better than uh i think that's a lot better than resetting and forcing people to lose everything they have because they might want to just want to like log on their character and just be like this is like a trophy this character this is like a trophy this character right here this is everything that i earned everything that i accomplished in wow classic and i want to keep this in in some form or fashion so yeah, I, I, I very strongly agree. I think that's one of the strongest appeals that Classical has. Um, I've heard a lot of people say, no, I've, I've never played a private server. I'm just waiting for Classic WoW because, or even before Classic WoW was announced, no, I've never put, I'd never wanted to play a private server because it could all be gone any minute. And I, I, if I'm putting time or effort into something, I want it to always be there. And I, I actually totally understand and respect that. Like we've seen private servers just, poof, just they're just gone, right? And uh, all the hours, all the time, all the effort you put into it, it's just gone. So. I think having that, like, like no, a lot of people want to invest time in Classical, knowing that that character will always be there. It'll mm -hmm. be a trophy, like S1 sort of, sort of said right there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, here's a question from Exceptionality, who asks, "Do you think there will be an overwhelming amount of warriors in Classic?" Um, I think a lot of people roll warrior at the start, but I think I read a stat; it was something like 16% of warriors actually make it to level 60. So at the end game, there'll still be a slightly, you know, a decent representation of warriors, definitely. But I don't think it's going to be like, I don't think everybody that rolls a warrior is going to stay a warrior uh, to 60, definitely. Yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, this is a good question right here. This is from, this is from Loctite. I think this will just be fun to talk about. Do you believe okay. that legacy servers are a retention-based project to maintain PC-based gamers as Activision seems to be making more of a demographic shift to mobile gaming? If so, how much long longevity do you see in the base three legacy server types, Vanilla, Burning Crusade, and Wrath? Uh, I think this is a really interesting thing to talk about, and like we might not be able to go like too ham on it on the podcast, otherwise we might end up talking for like two hours, two more hours. But um, I think that... I think it's an interesting thing to think about for sure if they're trying to have something that is sustainable like a, a repeatable process that they can do for 10 years like okay fresh every two years fresh or something like that um, and then they can kind of focus on like mobile games and whatnot and you know there, there was already like the rumors or the leaks or whatever you want to call it of like Warcraft Go and then them wanting to make a a mobile game for WoW uh, that's the way gaming is going in a lot of ways uh, you know just the more mobile demographic and stuff i know it's like really really big in asia so surely like as a company like i think it's fine to do that there's nothing wrong to for there's nothing wrong with making mobile games like that thing making mobile games there's nothing wrong with that uh and as a company that's probably something they should be doing uh what i think they should not be doing uh, i think just gaming in general i think companies should not go and uh neglect the player base of people who were playing on PC or consoles or whatever they did before and not to continue making games for that um, yeah. for that platform that they that they built their company on I think it's I think it's bad for them and, and you can see it with a lot of streamers right and it's 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 kind of a different thing but in a sense it's not right 
where you grow a channel doing one thing and then you have a really hard time switching and streaming something else or changing to another game. Uh, and it's, it's like the big concern for a lot of people that want to make the jump to variety. And I, I think that, um, you know, when you change how you started and how you grew, it's, it's very difficult unless you can do it at a really high level to, to kind of flip the script and go do something else. Yeah, I, uh, I think probably the, I, I think it's a little bit less about mobile games, just the nature of game development. Um, though mobile games are involved, I think the reality is that game companies are going, to, we're not going to see many games that target our demographic. And by our demographic, I mean sort of the old school legacy style gamer, turbo nerd, up late at night, haven't showered in three days, that demographic. Uh, people like us, I think we're not going to get many new games. Mm -hmm. I think probably the best we have to hope for are re-releases of <laughs> re-releases of games we've played in the past. We're talking, you know, um, Warcraft 3 Reforged. We're talking, I mean, Lord of the Rings has done it. Lord of the Rings Online Reforged, whatever they called it. Old School RuneScape. We're talking World of Warcraft Classic. We're talking um, EverQuest has done it now. Mm -hmm. I think companies companies are trying to move forward and appeal to different different you know maybe modern demographics while also give us uh, trying to retain people like us by just re-releasing things we've seen in the past right. i don't think they're growing to really invest or um put time into building new games for us i think that's probably just the reality it feels bad man yeah, yeah i think i think that would be a bad idea tip sorry i didn't mean to cut you off no problem um so so i basically um i've got a lot of thoughts on the subject but but in particular one of the reasons why Blizzard was so successful, and this is actually something that John Stats says in the World of Warcraft Diary. Shout out to John Stats, by the way. I think he's started printing them and shipping them out. So if you guys pre-ordered that, you might have already gotten it in the mail. I don't know. Um, but one of the things he says, Blizzard's strongest or, or biggest strength was the fact that they would self-publish their own games. And that gave them a tremendous amount of creative liberty in designing World of Warcraft. They could design the game exactly how they wanted it, and they didn't have to worry about a publisher coming in and forcing them to add, you know, things that might be more monetarily, you know, uh, feasible or monetarily enticing, but I might take away from the gameplay. The problem now is that Blizzard is no longer private company Blizzard in 2003, 2004. Blizzard is publicly traded entity Activision Blizzard and has the responsibility to all of its shareholders. Because it has a responsibility to these shareholders and because its market cap fluctuates so rapidly from a day-to-day -day basis, they have to, they are obligated to pursue whatever market trend is most profitable to them. And unfortunately, because mobile gaming is so profitable, you are going to see Activision Blizzard go in that direction. We've already seen it. They acquired King Digital two years ago. That's the company behind Candy Crush, the largest, most successful mobile game of all time. Uh, on top of that, you saw with Diablo Immortal, there's a rumor about Warcraft Go. It's supposed to be like a Pokemon Go Warcraft spinoff. And you're going to see more and more of that from Activision Blizzard, from EA, from Rockstar, from all of these publicly traded entities. So if you want, if you're one of the people that wants an awesome MMORPG, a new game that caters to you, a hardcore PC gamer, personally, I, I wouldn't be really looking towards these companies and I would look to more you know, companies that were similar to Blizzard back in 2003, large private companies that have a lot of capital, like the Riots, like, um, I want to say possibly Valve as well, lol, Valve making games. But you know what I mean? Basically, if, if you want to see a company make a really good game targeted at PC gamers, it will not be a publicly traded entity, most likely. It'll be a large private company with the capital and user base to take such a big risk. So back in the day, it was Vivendi Blizzard, right? Um, Bef Vivendi before they split from Vivendi, so yeah. was was Vivendi not publicly traded? Do you have any idea? Um, no, no, when they no when Vivendi had a big stake in Blizzard. Well, Vivendi, Vivendi's European company, I believe they had a big stake in Blizzard, but I'm not sure if they had it during the WoW days. Like I, I want to say 2007 was Vivendi, but I I honestly can't remember. I, I have no idea. I, uh, okay. I have no idea. Okay. Stuff. Uh, yeah. But kind of back to kind of back to what you were saying, stay safe about. Um kind of like the the companies kind of just maybe o over time just going more PC and, and tips you touched on this as well uh, I think that would be I, I just think it would be a bad idea right for companies to I mean PC gaming is something that's so strong and I understand like there's a big market for mobile gaming and stuff like that and I think not only do I think it's fine I, I think they probably should be doing that but they should also be doing whatever they were already doing it should be something that's in addition to not in place of well, this, this is sort of what I speculate. I think there's mm -hmm. probably some truth to this. I think that, you know, back in the day, if you wanted to be very successful, Diablo 
World lost Warcraft you. Lost you. Am I here? We good? Yeah. Okay. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I think that modern companies are spending less time and effort trying to appeal to turbo nerds that are willing to spend 10 hours a day playing but have less disposable income. And now they're focusing on people that can play two or three hours a day after work, maybe one hour a day, um, that still want to be successful but can't invest as much time, but these people have deeper pockets. So if, if you look at the time investment it takes to be a heroic raider today, maybe even a mythic raider, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, versus the time it took to be a competitive next Ramist raid or, or a competitive AQ raider in vanilla WoW, it takes way less time to be to be competitive. It takes way less of a time investment. You can you can it's much easier to be successful and casual in retail WoW than it was back in the day. Um, also, I think this demographic they're gainfully employed, they're upper upper middle class. <laughs> they they're willing to spend money on pet shops and and mount shops and character transfers and name changes and. I, I think that's the dem. I, I, what, I, I really strongly think this, and I'll never know, but this is my speculation. I think that even though WoW subs are way down, I bet WoW is making more money than it ever has. Like, I, I really think that. Um, I really, really think earnings. that. No, they, 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 say, they say so much during their earnings. And it's funny you say that. Those people that you're describing say safe, those, you know, middle class, you know, willing to, to spend money on, on these games they are so much better of a consumer and a customer than we are. Like if you're in here right now, if you're one of the 1,200 people watching this right now, you are the worst possible customer for a gaming company or any service provider because you are going to use the maximum, you're going to use their service the maximum amount possible while paying the least amount possible. Just by virtue of being here, you guys are probably more informed gamers, more informed consumers. You guys probably spend less on pets and stuff like that. It's like when you go to a gym, for example, and the guy that's like working out super hard, that crazy bodybuilder that's there every single day, dude, you don't want that guy in your gym because that guy wears the hell out of your equipment. Whereas the guy that's like, oh yeah, you know, I work like, you know, seven days a week. I'm like some middle-class guy. I'll come in, you know, maybe once a month or something like that. That's the guy you want in your gym because that's the guy paying, but he's not using up your services. And unfortunately, yeah. we're, we're the big uh, Chad that's coming and working out, you know, every single day. Well, um, you know, I, I, I would say that I, I actually don't think that's particularly the case. Because, like, if you look at it, and, and this is kind of like speaking to, like, my YouTube demographics, for example. Uh, it's a big audience of people who are, you know, 25. It, it's like I, it's like 25 to 34. It's, it's a large portion of my audience on, on yep. the YouTube audience, at least. Yep. Um, I would say that I, I would just venture to guess that the overwhelming majority of that player base that watches me are people that you know they they may be single they don't have a lot of like extra expenses in their lives like they're, they're people who they're they're old enough to have jobs and or, or to have a source of income i should say but they're just looking for something to spend it on right that's that's what i would think well yeah I'll, specifically to the demographic i know what you mean and yeah maybe possibly but here's an example. I used to work for this SaaS company, this project management software solution uh, solution company. And our best clients were the ones that would buy our software and never use it because they would get tied in to a two to three year commitment. They would pay for the software every single month. We would do the onboarding program. We would train them. But, you know, for laziness or, or just the inability to change, they would not adopt the software. Those were like the dream customers because basically they, they, they wouldn't use our services. They wouldn't call in for customer support. They would literally buy it, shelf it, and then just move on. Whereas the, the, the companies that would utilize the software, unfortunately, those were the biggest headaches because they're always playing with it. They're messing around with it. Every single day they want this to change. They want that to change. They're, they're complainers. complainers. They're complainers. They're compl That's what and, we are. We, everyone in this chat, us three, we're complainers. Like, uh, they exactly. can't even deny that. Whereas with people, players that aren't really engaged, they're they don't complain as much right okay. they're less of a pain in the ass yeah exactly uh, yeah, we're true. a pain in the ass <laughs> yeah we yeah. are aren't we yeah we are Not let good. blizzard hates us dude bible <laughs> thumb no, <laughs> they no. they hate them yeah they do they hate us but again uh, but it, like going back to the subject it's like again if it's if you're a multi-billion dollar conglomerate who do you want as your customer who's going to pay more who's going to give you less of a headache this group of people or that group of people and that's why you see these companies navigating towards that group of people not us but yeah mm -hmm. I think you're right i that's what i think it is yeah. but you know they're throwing us a bone 
you know, mm -hmm. classic WoW, mm -hmm. Bing Bong Bang, Warcraft 3 Reforged, Bing Bong Bang, probably got a D2 Reforged, we got Starcraft uh, Reforged, like, uh, they're, they're kind of thrown as bones, right? So... There's yeah. just no new games. <laughs> yeah, I just hope, man. I, I hope that because because we all know like classics classics not going to be forever. Like whatever game is not going to be forever. So uh, I, I just hope that the uh, I I just hope that th that somebody somebody picks it up, right? Whether whether you know Blizzard wants to continue it or any of these other big companies want to continue it or somebody else comes in and and really makes a name for themselves. I mean, like, dude, I, like I, I think just examples of good companies, man. Like like Path of Exile, I think is legitimately a good company, and like I, I'm probably not going to play it as my main game, but that's the first time I played a game like that, like that style of game, like Diablo or whatever, and I had a freaking good time. I, I had a I had a really good time playing it, and I and I went and I bought like I paid you know microtransactions. I paid for the stash thing because. If that's like content that I'm consuming, right? If that's a game that I'm playing, I'm spending my time on. Like I want to support that company, so like I just like bought the extra stash slots. Uh, like it's like buying a bank, basically. Uh, you know, because to me, it's like okay, I want to support this company. Like I like I think that's like a legitimately good company, you know. So, um, I don't know. We'll we'll see we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Gamers rise up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it'll be interesting. Um. Do you have any more questions or anything you guys want to touch on before we uh, call it a day? Are there any more questions in chat here? Guys, right now, post your most pressing questions. 10 seconds. Yeah, exactly um, 10 I, seconds. Go ahead, go ahead. I got a question. I got a question for chat, actually. Um, if there's any topic you guys want us to discuss in particular, uh, if there's anything you guys would like to see us talk about on the Classcast, feel free to let us know. Let S-Fan know uh, mm -hmm. on stream. Let him know on Twitter. Let me or stay safe now. I mean, we're open. We're open to, to suggestions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. And and uh, we, we really do appreciate you guys coming in and uh, enjoying the show and uh, everything else that we do. Uh, like I just posted, no I, I, I did P.O. Box opening yesterday, and I think a lot of people really enjoyed that. And uh, I, post that, I posted that video. I cut it up into a video, and I, and I posted that on my YouTube channel recently. So, again, if you guys haven't followed us yet, if you, if you guys haven't followed this channel or Stay Safe's channel or Tip's channel or uh, our, our YouTube channels as well, sub to our YouTube channels as well, um, all, all our handles are, are uh, below our pictures. Um, let's see. Talk La about like, the emergency. Last question from Simple. Do you, do you want to answer yeah, that? No, no. Uh, where's the question? Which one? Or not last question, but a quick question from Simple. You guys playing Atlas? You want to talk about that? uh yeah atlas uh atlas was like i guess just announced or i just heard about it i i don't like i don't even know but i guess it's coming out in a few days it's it's by the same people who made arc that's another mmo coming out here shortly i think it's going to be worth kicking around on launch and just kind of seeing what it is it might be something to do for a little bit or or it might suck like <laughs> like hell of i know <laughs> like it might be it might be terrible but uh you know it might be it might be something fun to do so i i, I think that's something we might we might try out so I, I don't get my I don't get my hopes up for for a lot of MMOs these days. Uh, I just kind of if it comes out and it's good, great. If it, if it comes out and it's not good, then it's like, well, at least I didn't get my hopes up, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, uh, I think I think I, I I think that's it. I think we're good for today, guys. Thank you so much for for joining us today for Classic Cast, uh, episode number twenty. Uh, we're working the. the yeah, number twenty. That's right, and and we're working on some things. I think uh, I, I think eventually we're going to be uh, providing the show in, in like an audio format as well to to download or podcast, uh, like an actual podcast. That's that's something we're going to be doing in the future. I know a lot of people have been uh, asking for that, uh, and and I'm working on some stuff to kind of get that going. Uh, this vod will be posted on YouTube the next day. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, please feel free to subscribe to, to my channel, to Tips Channel, to Stay Safe Channel, and uh, we do more classic talk and. Just kind of more fun general stuff. I'm gonna. I, I want to start doing like stream highlights and whatnot as well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and continue streaming after this, um, but we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, thank you for watching, everyone. Have a good day, everyone. Take care. Beep beep bop.